I've seen these on eBay for quite some time, years now, <laughs> and I don't know why I haven't bought some. Uh, they're kind of fun little things. Uh, but now I think uh, because I've been doing a lot of videos on RF and spectrum analyzers and stuff, I think uh, these would be fun things to, to do and measure. Um, so this is a transmitter and this is a receiver. And they're very, 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 very simple. So I think it'll be really good uh, to take a look at these, uh, both as measurements and as schematics and see how they work and um, see what we can learn from them. And they're in a good frequency range. They're, they're in a nice frequency range. Now they're not short enough that I can use my oscilloscope. Um, they are 433 megahertz. So I think it's a good learning exercise where you have something that you want to work on on the bench, but you know your old tools, your 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 voltmeter and your oscilloscope and stuff, you can't use. Um, there's no way to to do that. These are too fast. So you have to rely on RF methods. Um, so uh, spectrum analyzers is one of those great tools to be able to do things like this. So um, let's get one hooked up. Now these are very 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 simple. This one is just a uh, uh, an oscillator with no modulation. It, it, it does have modulation. There is an input pin uh, for data, but it's just on off. So it's basically CW. So this is this is just on off on off. That's the type of modulation this is doing. Um, and so the receiver is just going to say, is there something there or isn't there something there? And so it's a little receive circuit, so it's a, it's, a, it's a RF front end, and then it just has an op amp in the back that says, is there a signal there or is there not a signal there? It just gives a high or a low. So that's how these work. So they're very, very simple. Um, supposedly you can use them as a data link. Uh, I think that's probably a bit sketchy, but maybe if you built in um, uh, uh, error correction code, like a, a checksum or something to make sure that uh, you know things make sense when you when you transmit back and forth and then they're probably usable uh, so I haven't put an antenna on the receive side yet they did not come with antennas I was kind of disappointed about that but they were like a buck <laughs> I mean they were really super cheap so I just I just put something on here I didn't cut it to length I, I don't think it really matters for these things it just needs something um, they, they, they seem to have ones they'll sell you for a dollar I, I can't imagine spending a dollar for a, a piece of bent wire, so I just I just put something on here. It's 400 megahertz, so um, it's just going to be something, right? There's no ground plane, there's no nothing, so just some length of antenna would be would be fine, and it's all coiled up. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the schematics of these things and uh, take a look at that. Uh, so this is what I found. I don't think it exactly matches what I have, but it's probably very, very close. There is a oscillator. So this uh, transistor acts as the oscillator. And there's basically an enable pin. So this is just an on-off, just, just applies ground or not ground. So this, it turns the oscillator on and off. So that's how the data works, uh, labeled TXD. Um, but it's just an on-off switch. Okay. So... Uh, there's a capacitively coupled antenna, so that's my little spiral thing. And then there's a um, there's an inductor and a capacitor in the feedback loop. And so it has a, it has two capacitors in it, um, splitting the splitting the emitter. So I think that's a Colpitz oscillator. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different types of oscillators, so I don't know if it's, it's, it's classically a Colpitz or not, but uh, it definitely kind of acts as one. So there's a feedback path, right? So this is positive feedback. If this goes up, then it feeds back around, and this goes up. If that goes up, then the transistor turns on, and this goes up even more. So it's this positive feedback loop that allows it to oscillate. And in the feedback loop, they put a soft filter. So uh, the only uh, feedback has to go through that filter, so it's going to oscillate at that frequency. And it's one of those 433. It's marked R, R433. So um, it's similar to the filters used in the um, uh, Tiny SA. Uh, they use a 4, 433.9. 
megahertz uh, uh, 433.9 megahertz uh, filter. In fact, they use two in series in order to uh, kill the out-of-band uh, signals. So we'll see if uh, this is 433.9. 433 uh, on the back side is the transistor that oscillates, and that's in the middle here. And then over here on the side is the little uh, transistor that turns on and off. Okay. So let's apply uh, 5 volts. It says that the transmitter can operate between 5 and 12 volts, so uh, this, the, uh, uh, we're not going to talk about the, um, the receiver in this video, uh, but I'll, I'll shoot one about the receiver, uh, but I think it's 5 volts only, uh, if I remember right. I don't know. It's an op amp. Yeah, maybe it's, uh, maybe it's 5 to 12 also. Yeah. I think it says on the back 5 volts. Yeah, it says 5 volts in the back, so interesting. I'll take a look at that schematic too. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. Um, let's go ahead and uh, hook this up. All right, uh, I have it hooked up on the uh, breadboard here and 5 volts applied, so let's go over and take a look at the uh, spectrum analyzer. All right, so we're getting a, I, I just have a, a piece of wire hanging out of the, hanging out of the uh, analyzer as, a, as an antenna, so I've got a whole bunch of signals up there. So let's, uh, we know the frequency is around 433 because that's what the saw filter said. And let's do a frequency span of uh, say 10 megahertz. That should grab everything. Um, I didn't type that right. Frequency 433 megahertz. There we go, span. 10 megahertz. Yeah, there we go. All right, that's better. Um, so if things don't look right, <laughs> don't trust yourself. All right, so there we go. It's a little bit higher than, uh, so 433, and I said 433.9. So let's see if that's really right. The Spectrum Analyzer has this really cool feature. It says peak zoom. And if I hit that, it finds the peak and automatically puts it in the middle and adjusts the amplitude to give you maximum. And <laughs> it's all automatic. It's really cool. So it says 433.973. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, there's another feature of this analyzer. Um, and let me see if I can remember how to turn that on. Here it is. Uh, marker count. So what does marker count do? Um, there's an actual uh, oven control oscillator in the spectrum analyzer as an option. It's very, very accurate. And there's a, a big feedback loop and a sampler and a whole bunch of stuff in there to make sure accurate uh, frequency is very, very accurate. It allows you to apply that to a marker and send it through an actual counter. And so now we're getting uh, four decimal places after the megahertz. So it's 433.9691 and it's bouncing up around between one, two, and three on the last digit. So, yeah, it's a really cool feature. It does slow the spectrum analyzer down, though, so I'm going to turn it off. I just wanted to show that off. Okay, so there's our uh, there's our signal, and it looks real pretty. All right, so I need to address an issue before we go any further, and that is, um, why aren't you using the tiny SA? Because we can't afford one of these things, and we need the tiny SA. Well, it's a valid point and I try to use the Tiny SA as much as I can. Uh, one of the reasons is it's very difficult to photograph the Tiny SA. And if I'm teaching broad concepts of how you use spectrum analyzers to solve problems, then I'm gonna use a good one because it's much, much faster. It's got a wheel. It's just, it's just, it's more pleasant to use. It's easier to photograph. Um, so a bunch of things about using that is, is, is valid. So let me show you another reason why, in this particular case, I'm not going to be filming with the tiny SA. So you can see it's kind of difficult to photograph, but um, let's just deal with it. Uh, so um, let's see, I, I can't even touch it without everything getting in the way. Um, so it is, it is a bit difficult. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and turn the mode on. We have to use mode high because it's above three, it's above uh, 350 megahertz. Now, I've avoided doing any videos about the high mode on the tiny SA, and that was for a particular reason. That is, um, 
I try to be very fair in my evaluation of the tiny SA, and I try to give it every benefit of a doubt. It's only $50, and I'm just totally impressed with the design, the price point. Um, the software is catching up. There was a lot of problems originally, and those are getting fixed, and it's just gonna be, it's, it's a nice little thing. But it really is a real spectrum analyzer from zero to 350. Because they could add a second mode they did, but it's not a true spectrum analyzer. It's more of a radio receiver. Um, it doesn't use an external mixer. It doesn't use an IF filter. It, it just uses a single chip. So it's a little bit, it's a little bit dodgy on the high end. So I didn't want to say anything negative about the high end because that's not how it was designed. That's not the purpose it was doing. It comes for free, so why not put it in? So they, they made the right choice, but I have nothing negative to say about the high, uh, uh, high mode for the for the tiny essay having said that people are going to use it. Okay So here's an example of I'm, so, I'm sorry. It's really hard for me to do this on screen So I'm going to do center of uh, 433 like we did megahertz and I'm going to do a span of 10 megahertz just like we did on the other spectrum analyzer Okay, so that so here's the picture that we get right and then I said, okay, I want to do a marker um, uh, I want to do a marker, marker ops, move to center, okay, and then now we are looking at a one megahertz span, so I'm going to go back, uh, frequency span, one megahertz, <coughs> okay, so now we have, we have uh, apples and apples, uh, apples and apples between the two. So you can see how long that took me and how, uh, how difficult it is to photograph that without me getting in the way of the camera and everything. And uh, it is, it is, uh, it's, it's giving a reasonable, it's, it's giving a reasonable uh, approximation of the, uh, not approximation, it's doing a reasonable measurement uh, for this particular thing. Now let me show you one thing. Let me, um, I, I have the camera in uh, manual focus, so it's going to be out of it here. But just bear with me. I'm going to go to a, a 10 megahertz span, 100 megahertz span. Okay, so that you can see that the signal stayed very clean when I went to a hundred, a 10 megahertz span, and a 100 megahertz span. All right. So let's come down to the tiny SA. Let me go to a span of 10 megahertz and you can see that now it's gotten very dirty there's a whole bunch of things over here right and so like i said i have nothing negative to say about the tiny sa high mode it comes for free um, but if you're going to use it be aware that it's not really designed to do the high-end stuff it comes for free it's nice but uh, 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 be very, very careful if you use it in high mode because it's going to have lots of artifacts, okay? All right, having said that, let's go back up to uh, take a look at uh, what, we're, what we're trying to do here. I'm trying to teach broad concepts and uh, get everybody. So if you do buy a tiny SA, then you'll know how, how to make measurements. Um, and uh, it's, just, it's just easier this way. All right, so let's go back to uh, peak zoom. Da, 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 da. Ah, it looks really, really clean. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, modulate the uh, modulate the uh, the uh, transmitter. Um, so how we're going to modulate the transmitter? It's just an on-off signal. So it's like I said, it's kind of like Morse code. So what I'm going to do is let's see how can I photograph this. Let me move the camera a bit. Okay, I'm going to use this. What is that? It's a 555 timer uh, module. Uh, these are really cool. I've used this on breadboards all the time. So I'm going to pull out this and pop in this. So now uh, we are turning on and off. Or, you know, data input is 10 kilohertz. So the, the, this oscillator is turning on and off at, at 10 kilohertz. Uh, so let's go see if that does something of that does something to the spectrum and oh look it does so let's uh let's uh, zoom in on the spectrum analyzer and i'll show you uh 
uh, what it is and how you can evaluate uh, a signal of something like this. And we'll show you maybe a new feature uh, to do that maybe you didn't know before. Okay, let's take a look at this uh, modulated signal now with the spectrum analyzer. We'll go to frequency 434 megahertz. We'll do a span of 10 megahertz. And there we go, there's our signal. And it's bouncing around because it's modulated. Okay. So let's do an amplitude. So I'm gonna do a zero span. I've covered it before, but if you're not familiar with zero span, we're gonna take our signal and we're gonna try to get the peaks happening just below the reference level, okay? So right there, we're getting peaks. Now, we're in logarithmic, so we have uh, dB steps on the left-hand side, but we can go to linear steps. If we go to linear, now, instead of the units of log, we're getting units of uh, millivolts, right? And then, if we go to zero span, so uh, span, zero span, so now, instead of frequency versus time, we, uh, we have time, I'm sorry, frequency versus amplitude, we have time versus amplitude. So this is the actual live picture of, uh, uh, of the signal. So even the tiny SA has a zero span mode, right? And so there we go, we're getting our zero, we're getting our zero span. Now, um, we can do a single sweep, so we can just pause it so it doesn't go crazy. Okay, so now we want to analyze it. We want to make sure that these are happening at the modulation frequency that we're interested in, or uh, how do we measure that? Well, we can't sweep very fast, so it's not a very good oscilloscope, but we can do an FFT on that signal. <laughs> now that sounds a bit strange. Most times people believe that you get an oscilloscope with an FFT and then you can turn it into a spectrum analyzer. But here we're taking a spectrum analyzer, turning it into an oscilloscope. Then we're putting an FFT on top of that. So uh, let's go to measure and there's an FFT menu. And then I can do an FFT. And there we go, we've gotten an FFT on that particular image. And so we have a bunch of peaks here. So now we're back to frequency versus amplitude. And we can do a peak search on this. We can go to the first peak and it reads 1.175 kilohertz. And that is the modulation frequency that that 555 timer. I have it set to roughly 1200. So it's actually uh, 1.175 kilohertz. So um, you can go to the next, uh, the next peak if you want. It's at uh, 2.375 kilohertz. So that's uh, the second harmonic. So you can see, and this tells you you have a score wave, right? If you're getting the, the entire series here, you're getting a, um, you're getting a, it's not sine wave modulated. So anyway, um, if you have a fancy spectrum analyzer that does all of this, you can go from frequency mode to time mode, back to frequency mode, and take a look at, uh, take a look at things like modulation this way. All right, I've probably confused everybody, but maybe somebody learned something. Uh, anyway, I'm just having fun with my new toys.